Hello, Tim again. Got a couple projects I've done recently that I thought I'd share. Um, I didn't really go through the take pictures as I build process, but I will go ahead and show you what I did, give you some good ideas. One of the projects was a portable electric brewery controller. And the other was uh, actually just a simple one. Uh, I created an extension cord GFCI. Um, sometimes when you uh, go somewhere and if I have to use my portable brewery controller uh, I have no way of knowing <coughs> if the outlet I'm plugging in is ground fault protected. Uh, I didn't put a ground fault outlet on the controller itself so what I've done is I've just made an extension cord with the 20 amp GFCI uh, outlet built in. Pretty straightforward project. Anybody who's put an outlet in knows how to wire an outlet. Uh, on the outside of the metal junction box that the outlet is in, I just took some silicone caulk and uh, put some on there and just wet my fingers and rubbed it around to seal that up a bit. Uh, I mean, it's not watertight, but if something happened it was sitting on the ground, it wouldn't get in the bottom of the uh, junction box. Anyway, straightforward. 14 gauge uh, cord from a computer server. I know about I know 10 feet long, and uh, again 20 volt GFCI protected plug. Plug it into the wall there. Notice I got my little green light. Hit the button, and it trips. Uh, further proof. Fan going, hit the button, test button. Oops, excuse me. There we go. Can't do things with my left hand very well. Anyway, there you have it. The other project I did, as I mentioned, is my uh, brewery controller. Uh, let me get the what I've done is taken a Harbor Freight $5 ammo box, put a pit on it, a uh, XLR microphone outlet, a switch, and if you can see on the switch, I don't know if I'd be able to read this, and I'll kind of, yeah, probably enough, too much glare. and not enough focus but uh, what that says is on the top of the switch it says PT100 bottom of the switch it says K um, I've got an assortment of temperature probes and some PT100s some K style and what that does is let me select between the two of them so I can maximize my inventory of probes um, it's a little tricky to put that together uh, the schematic of the PID um, shows you which out or which uh, screw in terminals support which type of controller and what you had I had to do is just uh, with this uh, double pull double throw switch uh, I believe disconnect one of the probes from one of my connections here so that the controller would work properly with that particular uh, sensor and then of course on the PID you've got a program the PID for whichever controller style you're using it varies by whatever PID you're using um, I'm using the uh, my pin uh, SD4 I believe something like that T T4D or TD4 series this is the one with only a single alarm on it I used to have it on my big uh, brewery controller the one that's hanging on the wall over there in the corner uh, with only a single alarm but I picked up another one that had the dual alarms and swapped it out to make the portable one got temperature probes again XLR collect connector uh, this one happens to be a PT100 style it's got a thread on the end and I took some hose clamps and some plastic tubing to uh, water tight the outside here and hold it in place in the well actually this is a reducing uh, fitting 
and I just hose clamped it to the outside so it doesn't leak. Uh, I believe that's what it is. Anyhow, uh, I also got a, another one here, a similar type of thing. I believe this is a K style, uh, pretty long. I can dump this, just hang this down into a boil kettle if I don't have an outlet on the side of the boil kettle or my uh, hot liquor tank. Uh, same type of thing. The long control pin goes through an adapter here and uh, I've used uh, hose clamps to clamp this uh, plastic hose to it. I also um, put some uh, liquid gasket around the inside of that fitting. Uh, it's threaded into the fitting and it holds it but I just wanted an extra level of protection there so I just took some uh, standard uh, uh, RTD red I'll also put it on the top of the plastic thing here where the cord comes out of the plastic tube. Uh, your basic liquid gasket. I bought it at a car store. Maybe even picked it up at Menards. I'm not sure at the home center. Inside my controller. Um, I found this plastic thing. This used to be for a, uh, a barbecue grill controller. It was big plastic molded and the barbecue grill thermost uh, temperature sensor, thermometer. Uh, I cut that up, set it in the top of here, so it's kind of a little storage thing for my controller so I can put it in the box. Inside the box here, oh, yeah, that holds on pretty good. Uh, you can see the various wirings in there. Uh, off to the left here, of course that's my hot wire. Uh, I've got that uh, wire netted to the different outlets to my uh, relay here, a solid state relay and it's on a heat sink. Uh, the common wire goes around the ground wire of course. If you look at the switch, um, I've actually only got one side of the double pole on there being used and essentially one side uh, disconnects the connection and the other side connects the connection so that, uh, that when you use a PT100 style uh, pins 8 and 9 I believe need to be jumpered across so what that does is when I'm using it it jumpers the pins across when I need the K style they shouldn't be jumpered so I un disconnect it so it's not jumpered uh, PID wirings, just follow the instructions on your PID sheet uh, to how it works with the relay and uh, how it sends power to your outlets. Uh, on my outlets, what I've got here is a, uh, a twist lock 20 amp 120 volt outlet there. Um, I've got the standard 110 outlets here. The top one that's white is uh, on off controlled by the switch over here for my pump. The bottom one which is the red is controlled by the PID just like the orange one is controlled by the PID. Uh, that's an L520 twist lock. Um, both of these go on and off at the same time. I did that just because uh, I've got some heat sticks and uh, occasionally um, if I have to rebuild a heat stick and I don't have a twist lock and I'll use a standard plug so I figured that would be handy to have just in case. Uh, typically though I do use the twist locks uh, so that it doesn't come out. But anyway, this is my portable controller made out of an ammo box. There's another angle of viewing there and uh, hope this helpful. Gives you some ideas. Works pretty slick. Uh, not only can I use it for brewing, um, actually used it for uh, smoking. I've got an electric smoker. Um, I can set the temperature of the inside of the smoker uh, on and off with the, just turning on and off the element and set the temperature to 250 or whatever and uh, works good for that. Uh, I suppose you could also use it for a meat controller. Uh, stick a probe inside your meat and if you have a big roast or uh, something like that and you need your internal temperature to get up to uh, 130 for medium rare or 165 for medium well and just let it go. Anyhow, hope this is helpful.
again hope it gives you some ideas uh, enjoy cheers all right quick update on my brew controller I use it this weekend to control the heating element in my electric smoker worked really well got the temperature right where it needed to kept it there problem was it was pretty warm outside and I had left the cover closed like this well after running it for two or three hours the um, SSR uh, the relay overheated a little bit and it kind of melded it let me take the camera off of here off my tripod and I'll give you a look at what it did to it now since then um, I have been doing a little bit of experimenting but if you look if I get this way this light okay focus um, you can see it's a little bubbly on top of it well that uh, solid state relay is not working anymore so what I'm doing um, I've ordered some new ones I ordered one and I ordered a spare I actually took a fan off the heat sink of a uh, dead computer uh, that was on the uh, CPU and I put it in it go ahead and plug it in now if you see I just set the temperature to 71 68 outside I have my thing plugged in but you notice fans working what I did is I hooked the fan up to the uh, PDU output slash SSR input so when it kicks off the SSR it's going to kick off the fan now what's going to happen I'm going to go ahead and I'll set the temperature up a little bit Let's say I want it to get up to okay set it up a little higher with the SSR powered up all the time fan works pretty good still cycles on and off with the SSR but it's going to put out enough air to where it'll cycle through the inside here what I think I'm going to do and I may or may not update this video is I'm just going to stick it right here I'm going to cut a notch out right here and put the fan up there on the lid and uh, it'll be up right in this general area here so it'll blow air straight down there keep the uh, PID cool keep the SSR cool and any excess pressure should go out where I've got the outlets back there there's plenty of air gaps there to let the pressure out and if I have to I may drill some holes in the side over here or the side over here uh, let off a little bit of the pressure and circulate it around but uh, anyway just wanted to update this a little bit and uh, give you a little heads up anyway the controller works pretty well I am happy with it it worked good before when I was using it inside just for brewing and uh, I think part of the problem was I was outside smoking it was sitting in the sunlight the sun baking down on this dark colored box uh, probably kicked the temperature in there up to 120 130 degrees it was about an 85 90 degree day outside so anyway uh, hope you guys can learn from my experience and put it to use take care cheers all right on the last video I showed you my solid state relay and if you look kind of bulged over in the top well, I got a couple new ones, one for a spare and one to have, and I replaced it inside here. 
Now I also mentioned I was going to put a fan in it and I've decided that uh, this little fan is not going to cut it so I found a slightly larger fan. It's another 12 volt fan. It should work pretty good and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount it on the outside here and uh, have it blowing the air into it. I'll put some vents in the other side so the air can uh, go through and circulate. But that's what I'm going to do now to see if I can make it so I don't blow out another SSR. What I'm going to do now is I've taken my fan, measured the holes, they're about two and three quarters inches apart, gone ahead and drilled four holes in the corner here uh, for the mounting. Now I got a hole saw. I'm going to check my hole saw and it's the right diameter for the fan to fit in. And I've crisscrossed from corner to corner and I had a point in the center here that I'm going to use for where my hole saw goes. I'm going to just go ahead and I do have a slight problem here in that my SSR just happens to be on the other side of this hole now and if I drill in it I'm going to drill through the SSR so i got to come up with something to keep this thing centered without drilling through my SSR my centering drill is just a little bit long so I'll figure that out okay got it to work what I did is I loosened up the SSD pushed it off to the side and I took the drill that's in the center of my hole saw and I just let it freewheel See? so that when I put it in here and push this thing to the side the drill wasn't drilling into it and I was able to cut the hole nicely now it's just a matter of mounting the fan okay all finished what I did cut the fan mounted on the side here camera just a little closer okay notice I got the uh, pid going right now you can see that red light blinking that means it's going on and off can't really see it but what I've done is I've hooked another fan up to my AC output and you can watch that fan is going a little bit on and off I'm going to set the temperature up a little bit and the PID's working not only is that fan going really well from the PID turning it on and off but the fan in the box is going pretty good too I don't know if you can really see that churning but that's going 100% right now what I did inside is see I just drilled a hole up here and uh, it's actually got a pretty good uh, breeze coming through there I did drill some exhaust holes on the end here so there wouldn't be too much back pressure on it and get a little bit of circulation seems to work good I'll be trying it out sometime soon since this is 120 volt I will probably use it uh, on my rim system as I mentioned in the earlier video um, the one where I talked about how my uh, SSR got a little bit uh, overworked here in fact you look inside there, I don't know if you can see it or not, 
but uh, kind of melted things in there the heat melted the cap on it and it doesn't work anymore trash anyway hopefully I won't do that with the new one and uh, things will work good uh, I don't know if I use it for a barbecue controller again it did work pretty good uh, putting the sensor inside my electric uh, kettle barbecue and uh, kept it in pretty decent heat I know it'll work really well for the rim system I've used it for that before and uh, I use it for anything I can use it for that's going to have 120 volts I could really uh, use it for a kegerator if I really want to do uh, be kind of a waste of a good uh, brew controller for a kegerator you can make them a lot cheaper uh, but uh, hope you found this helpful learned a little bit from my mistakes hopefully you won't make them yourself and uh, try a project like this doesn't take much to do uh, just a little bit of thinking design the circuitry a li little bit uh, like I said make sure you read the wiring diagram on your PID controller and uh, wire accordingly. So, take care. Have a great summer. Brew lots. Drink often. Cheers.